he's prepared for us, which I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But, Coach, welcome to Seattle and welcome to the Brock and Salk Show. It's nice to meet you in person. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Brock, C- good to see you guys. Con- congratulations. And what? Uh, tell us a little bit about your first – what, week and a half or so here? What It must be a whirlwind. What have you been doing for the last 10 days? <laughs> <laughs> well, some people don't think it, but we have been working on our staff the whole time. <laughs> so uh, uh, we're going through the process. It's funny, we came over to the facility the first time to in- introduce us before the press conference and uh, met everybody r- briefly, but then we were on the board, you know, working on staff immediately. So it, it's been it's, – it's a long process, but uh, it's been a great process trying to, trying to find the right guys to, to come in here and, and coach our team. What have you learned through that process, Mike? Kind of first time you've you've been down that road. I'm sure you've you know played a role in hiring secondary coaches or some other components of a defense, but to do the whole organization, what have you kind of learned along the way? Yeah, you try to stay patient with the whole with the whole process. I mean, and there's going to be some guys that end up taking jobs other places, but like the timing doesn't work out, so you can't get frustrated with it. And uh, you know, you went in talking to John and how we wanted to, how we wanted to build this thing and. And um, there's a process behind it about how we wanted to handle it. And uh, just trying to adhere to that without getting impatient and, and making decisions that, you know, that you might not be um, what's in best interest for the team. So just trying to stick to that and, and, and trusting that it'll, it'll shape up over here over the next week or so. What drew you to Ryan Grubb? <laughs> um, been, on, you know, been on my radar watching you know, his teams perform uh, throughout the season. And uh, obviously thinking that a, you know, a situation like this might come about. And then uh, getting to know him throughout the process and the type of guy he is. And, you know, he's, he's been a winner everywhere he's been. And I just think it speaks to his, his uh, football character and things that him and Kalen have done over time. Everywhere they've gone, they've really rebuilt the culture where they've been and, and they've won immediately. Having that type of growth mindset, being able to adapt to the players that he has in, this, in his scheme. And I just – I disrespect about you know what his offense looks like you mentioned that growth mindset a couple of times last week and it it stood out to both of us what how do you judge that when you're interviewing people or talking to some of these guys how do you and for those people who don't know what a growth mindset is maybe you could even explain it because i know it's sort of a hot term in education yeah it's a little but i don't know that everybody knows what it means yeah i think you're trying to understand how people think and it's um trying to push the envelope about what they're trying to do and what trying they're accomplish. So people that just have the mindset of like, Hey, this was, this way we've always done it. And this is the way to do it. And we're stuck on that. Like that's not appealing to me and the guys that were trying to, you know, join our organization. So uh, I think when you look at his track record and, and the things that they've done, they're always looking to find new ways schematically and through relationships and how he operates uh, to help his guys. And I just, I respected that about him. And, and a lot of, and there's a lot of great coaches out there that have that type of mindset, but, um, you're, I think it's important. Like we're, t- we have a term here to call like chasing edges, you know, and, and that's through all, all aspects of your program. And so those are the type of people that we need in here, you know, to have that type of mentality. What's the genesis of chasing edges? Well, um, this is something that was in Baltimore from John that he, he had mentioned a couple of times and we've, and we, him and I have had conversations with, uh, about, uh, about, you know, the, the Baltimore program, but, my mentality is take that in terms of, you know, built in, it was more schematics, Brock, you know, yeah. in Baltimore, but um, it really resonated with me about how you want to build your program. And I just think that it's so competitive in the NFL and it's so difficult to win and you win on the margins. And so if we can have the mentality here in Seattle, regardless, like even just how we operate with our PR department, is just, you know, video, all those types of things, how we generate information, uh, how we coach our guys, the drills that we do, messaging to the team, just every aspect of our program. If we have the mentality where we're trying to push the envelope, trying to win on the margins, I just I just think that's that's the only way to go about it. You know, to win to win in this in in the NFL. What did so you take what, away from the Super Bowl last night? By the way, were they chasing any edges <laughs> there? Was there any, any winning in the margins? Anything you take away from that? You know, I, shoot, I actually want to watch. The, I want. To, I can't wait to watch the tape. You know, that'll happen like three months from now when, on, the, on the on the pace that we're at now. But um, shoot, I just I I thought uh, I thought I thought Spags had a great game plan defensively. I was really interested to see what they did, and and San Francisco played well on defense too. But um, I'm sure there's things to come up. You know, obviously the the overtime decision and things like that. But. Uh, yeah, just it just it does show. I mean, it came down to the last second, right, Brock? I mean, yep. you know, and so 
it just shows you. I mean, and like like the third down, the third down play that Kansas City stopped, and I think to force a field goal at the end. You know, I mean, those things are uh, those things are obviously really important. Are you ready to make those decisions in a game? <laughs> right. You got to be thinking yeah, along I mean, with him now when I mean, you the watch. The short answer is, is you have to be. Right. But it's going to take a lot of work. You know, identifying the situations, building out a great plan throughout the off season of being able to practice them enough that we're going to have to do with two uh, coordinators as well. Um, but I think when you put yourself in those situations throughout and, and you have a great plan from now until September, you know, then when those situations come up, we're ready to go. Actually, I watched the game with John last night and I was talking through like some of the things that, that you know, my mentality and those things right, that uh, happen in real time. And, you know, it's interesting, but I think you have to have a, a philosophy going into the game and then be able to be adjustable as the game, you know, declares. Let's come come back to the offense for a moment. I want, I want to hear a little bit more about not just Grubb, but also – what you want the offense to look like? Does it? How does it complement the defense that you've sort of had in your mind? What should we expect from that? Well, I, I, we're gonna. I want to build the offense through the same lens of how we're building, of how we built the defense, and we're gonna build it here. So we have to be really, really good at the core philosophies, core fundamentals, core concepts, and then I, we want to be able to apply those things you know, on a game-to-game -game basis based on who we're playing. So we don't want to reinvent our offense every week. So we have to have a core identity. So what is that? Well, we're going to be a physical unit. Like, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna run the football, you know, and we want to have answers for the quarterback, and we want to keep it consistent for him, you know, so he can play fast and play decisive and, uh, and get the ball to our playmakers. So, I mean, I know that's kind of coach speak, but, I mean, it's a it needs to be an efficient unit. You know, we want to be able to possess the ball. We want to be able to – uh, obviously be explosive and not turn the ball over. And I think that's going to come through run and play action on early downs. And then when we, when we are forced to you know, drop back in those situations, having a consistency in, 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 the, in the quarterback's reads so he can play fast and, uh, and, uh, and be decisive you know, when we have to drop back and throw the ball. Where are you on risk in, on <laughs> offense? Are you, are you willing and, and interested in taking risks for big rewards? Or are you trying to make sure your quarterback – doesn't turn the ball over at all costs. Where, where do you yeah. fall on that spectrum? Yeah, I, I think you'd, you have to be you have to be aggressive. You have to be aggressive, and and you do that through calculated risk. So, I guess my answer is, is it's calculated risk. <laughs> you know. So, but those are those are things you just have to be measured about. I mean, you're getting to know my personality. I'm a pretty measured guy. Um, but we're not just going to be chucking the ball over the yard every every down. That's not the way to win in the NFL. I mean, you, you guys saw it last night. Like you got to be able to run the ball. And you got to be able to protect it, you know. So, um, you know, but there's going to be opportunities to throw the football down the field and, and and get the ball in the perimeter. I mean, obviously those those things are imperative, you know, to win to win in this league as well. Are you more of a finance guy or management guy? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> I Neither. I mean, well, Sigma cum laude <laughs> in finance. I mean, I see that in the in the background. I've also heard, you know, some of the master's degree in management. Those oh, things come into play. Man. Yeah, I think you know, Brock. I I. Uh, I think the finance thing is more of a problem solving type type mentality. You know, I think that's really what finance is, right? It's just putting numbers behind it. Um, definitely not accounting, no offense to those folks, but it's just, I, that I hated that class, man. That was tough. You know, <laughs> that was my, that was, uh, that was tough, but I, through, through finance, it was more like, how do you, how do you figure out how to get stuff done, but through numbers. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was more of my mentality. And then management, I, I, I prefer the term leadership, you know, in terms of bringing people together. Um, so, you know, uh, it's been a long time since I was in those finance classes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's interesting you bring that up because I think of Ryan Grubb and I called a bunch of his games over the last couple of years and been out on the practice field. To me, that is what comes across. People will look at the raw numbers, Mike, and say, oh my gosh, Mike McDonald hired a guy that throws the ball 61% of the time. Last two years of Washington, he chucks it six out of 10 times. How is he going to balance all of this out? But when I look at his system, pre-snap motion, shifts, movements, getting, yeah. getting to answers, as you said, for the quarterback, I guess um, what was some of the greatest appeal with his system in particular? Well, to, you know, to your point with the numbers, I mean, yeah, initially you look at the, the pass stats, you're like, man, they're chucking it all over the yard, to your point. But they do, they've been able to possess the ball and um and be efficient in how they operate and i think i think that's also reflective of the of the roster that they had in washington and be accentuate the guys that they had and, and the talent that they had so it, you, that speaks to adaptability and his flexibility and how he calls it but ryan i mean uh ryan's an o-line guy at heart you know and uh, i really respect that about him and there's a lot of great play callers in this league 
you know, they got you know, they really have a, a core identity through the offensive line. So, um, and I think their run, like you look at the run numbers, they're also very efficient running the football. And so we're definitely going to be, that's going to be our, one of our core identities, being able to run the ball and, and, um, and it's not, and, and have multiple runs, you know, have different ways to attack offenses through the run game. And, uh, and those are conversations that him and I have had. And, you know, as we build this thing out, then, um, you know, I'm sure that, uh, It'll it'll look a little bit different than it did in Washington, but like to your point, a lot of the motions, the pre-snap shifts, you know, that that gives defensive fits and it gives quarterback answers. And to me, that's uh, that's good for us. Talking to Coach Mike McDonald, new Seahawks head coach. Along those lines, what does your ideal quarterback look like? What hmm. qualities does he possess? Yeah, the court. Yeah, there's quarterbacks come in all different shapes and sizes. <laughs> but to me, can you can you make people around you better? And can you bring people together? And are they, are they going to go play for you? I mean, in terms of anticipation and accuracy and things like that and playing on time, playing with anticipation, um, being able to see, the, you know, being able to have great vision of the field and see it. I mean, those things are obviously incredibly important. But at its core, it's, hey, can we bring, can we bring the team together and, and, we'll, and will the guys follow you and we'll go fight on Sundays? And um, th- that's, that's obviously that's the starting point. What did that uh, game in early November against the Seahawks, do you remember that one very much? I know John did, and John referenced that at your press conference and many yeah. different memories between you and him. Do you remember that game and, and studying this team and now sitting in the seat you're sitting in as the head coach? Could you have ever imagined then that you would be in this seat today? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously every game is really important. Seattle was playing really well coming into that game, so that was that was a big one um, having them – in Baltimore, um, and I mean, they get, we got really good players here. I mean, I remember that. I mean, it's just we our the Ravens defense that day we played really well, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I think that's I think talking to some of the guys on offense so far, they like that's what they spoke to was like the cohesiveness of how we play on defense. So I'm looking forward to building that here. But um, yeah, I remember the game, of course. But at, at the, and at the time, Brock, like you're you're, you're just. I mean, you know how it is in the league. You're just, it's a one week at a time. I mean, you're not thinking about being a head coach. I mean, you're just trying to trying to win that game and, and putting everything you can possibly do from week to week and, and, you know, to be successful. And then that was the mentality, you know, that week. You mentioned uh, some of the guys you've had a chance to talk to so far. What have those conversations been like? Who have you spoken with? Yeah, so we're working our way through the guys slowly but surely. But, um, I, but right now the quarterback's, you know, Drew and Gina have been the main guys we've talked to, and then we're working our way through now. But I just, my message to the guys has just been, hey, look, be patient. We're trying to spend a lot of time. You know, I'm on a lot of Zooms right now, a lot of phone calls with coaches and stuff. So, um, But we're setting some time, some, some time out each day to, to, talk, to call the guys and, and kind of catch up with those guys. Was the British speaking, was that the overwhelming move with your D coordinator, the fact he could yeah, speak that was, so Yeah, that was the driving force. That was actually, as soon as I heard Aiden, Aiden talk, I knew that was the guy, you know. <laughs> You don't, was, you don't hear a ton of British accents. I know. I was surprised. Game. I was surprised. I was surprised. I thought we were going to go to a Sounders game when he started talking about football. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. you, got, you don't have a, a history together, right? I mean, this is sort of bringing somebody in that you don't know all that well. Well, you know, it's. Um, I think it speaks to the process that we that we came in with the mentality we had about trying to find the best people with you know with the just with the personality and the mindset that we're looking for and the track record and and. Um, Aiden became in highly, highly recommended and um, became, got on our interview list and, and knocked it out of the park when we first sat down. And I said, and just listening to him talk about how he sees the game uh, was very similar to how I saw it in terms of what you needed to do to be able to defend offenses um, these days. And, and he had some really interesting perspectives. So we felt like, shoot, we got to get this guy here in person. Brought him in, did a great job, and, uh, and it just kind of took off from there. So I'm really excited to work with him, and uh, he's coming in town here and uh, later on today, actually. So we're excited to sit down and start building the staff out. How did Leslie Frazier come into the fold? Oh, that he's um, just – I worked with Leslie back in Baltimore, I think in 2016 and 20, 2015, 2016 maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, – uh, so I've had a relationship with with Les for a long time, and obviously he's got an incredible track record in the NFL uh, being a head coach. Um, high powered defenses, being on the Bears eighty five team, I mean just um so much wealth of knowledge, you know, so I have so much respect for him 
uh, both in what he knows football wise and also just his character. And so uh, he's going to be a massive resource for us. And as me, and me personally, navigating it, being a first time head coach, he's kind of been through the wars. He can see around the corners, and uh, he's been a he's been a great help so far. But we're we're working on this thing as a great partnership between him and I, and um, just really respect less. I'm just I'm really happy that he decided to join us. We got a text message here who says, "I'm a CPA. Don't worry, no offense taken." So they're. <laughs> The accountants out there are okay with you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, we're talking to Coach Mike McDonald, and, and I'll admit this is a little surreal. I mean, Brock and I have been hosting this show for the better part of 15 years, and for 14 of them we sat across the table from one coach. You come into the building following that coach, and the ghosts are everywhere, and his influence upon this building is so strong. How do you How do you respect that while still putting your own brand and stamp on things like – the basketball hoop that's out there yeah, or we the haven't music. decided what to do the hoop yet. Yeah. Right. The music at, at, uh, at training camp. How, how will you handle all of that stuff? Yeah. You know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not intimidated by, by that. It's just, I, it's not something that I'm, I'm worried about. Or it's something that you want to embrace. I mean, like I spoke to in our press conference, I mean, you think about the Seattle Seahawks, it's kind of, I mean, it's, you, you can't not think about, you know, coach Carroll in that, in that regard. And, um, you have to have respect for what they've been able to do here in the last 15 years. Um, so I think you're looking at building upon the foundation that they, and not trying to reset it. I mean, that's, that just makes sense to me, you know, and they've done a lot of great things here. And I think, um, how, okay, so how do you approach it? Well, I mean, my philosophy, so it's going to be core to us and, uh, and how we want to operate. And I think you stay true to, to who I am as a person and as a leader and as a coach and uh, and that'll start to like kind of manifest itself in terms of the personality of the team, and uh, and 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 I think we're just gonna you go in with the mentality of hey let's do it what's best for for the Seahawks and the, who the guys ha- we have and where we want to go but um, and and the the kind of the remnants of Coach Carroll's legacy here I mean yeah absolutely like we're not trying to shy away we want that we want to be around that you know we want to build around that so um, yeah I'm excited I'm excited to kind of work through that and see where and see where it takes us. And right alongside, I, I can't help but think of a Jim Harbaugh and a John Harbaugh, right? And Pete had his background <laughs> with those guys and those yeah. battles in this division and everything else. I'm just curious as now you sit as the head coach, and I know it's only been a couple of weeks, but what do you feel like is the biggest imprint that the Harbaugh's made on you? Man, um, it's, 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 uh, I mean, it's a lot of who I am, Brock. It really is. I mean, that's been my experience the last 10 years you know i mean these i've really been shaped through those two organizations but the big the biggest thing that i is is there's there's no other there's no alter agenda with those two with with john and jim they're as real as it gets and the players realize that that their motive is what's best for the team and what's best for the players and what and they have their players' backs, and they're ready to go to war with those guys. You know, yeah. I mean, they're, they're an ultimate. Talk about ultimate competitors. And so I have the same mentality. I mean, it's 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 through the lens of what's best for the team, what's best for the players, and uh, and we're going to build it that way rather mm-hmm. than just you know being you know stubborn and see what what's be- what Mike McDonald thinks all yeah, the time. Yeah, I think that's what really struck me. And and you and I, I think a couple times had production meetings in your one year in Michigan there, and it just struck me that I don't think people realize how much Jim is a player's coach, right? You see, you know, the the press conferences and everything else and, and, and John as well, that they just love their players. And when you were there for just that one year, I know I felt it. I know you felt it when we talked about it then. Do you feel like you will bring that kind of same emphasis, emphasis and impetus that it is going to be about these players? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the game's always been about the players always will be. I mean, I think when you're in it with them every day, Brock, and you realize what these guys do on a day-to-day basis, you can't help but have massive respect for what this job entails and how competitive it is and how tough it is to be successful. And that's why we take this job so seriously. You know, That's why we spend so much time trying to put them in a position to be successful. And when, and when they are, that's why it's so rewarding because you realize how difficult it is. But absolutely. I mean, everything. And I, I said in our press conference, all of our decisions will be driven for what's best for the guys and what's best for the team. I mean – I mean, to me, it's like that's like the ultimate. That's like the all-time no-brainer. How could you not think that way? Mm-hmm. So, uh, 
yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll build it around them. Coach, we get about three, four minutes here, and we spent a lot of time talking football, and hopefully we'll have more opportunities to do that with you into the future. But I was hoping we could take just a couple of minutes and just hear a little bit about who you are, okay. who, like how you grew up, or how you end up here. Yeah. I know you were born in Massachusetts, moved to Georgia. You talked about your parents uh, really, really fondly in your press conference a week or so ago. How, what did your parents do? Why did they move from <laughs> you know, Massachusetts to Georgia? How did all that happen? Yeah, so my dad's a West Point grad, and uh, so you know he bounced around a little bit. He was in Germany after uh, graduating, but then we all, all of our family was from the Northeast. Mm. He ended up taking a job with AT&T. And we moved to Georgia, so we got moved down there. But, <clears throat> yeah, it's funny. I actually took that job like a couple months later. I ended up switching jobs once we moved down to Georgia. But I had a great childhood. I mean, played a bunch of sports down there in Atlanta. I was better at baseball than I was at football. I tell people I retired, you know, in, in high school playing football because I wasn't any good. But, catcher? Uh, <laughs> Are you a catcher? No, I was, I was a middle infielder okay. in baseball, yeah. But, um, yeah, I just, you know – I, I love the game of football, man. Like my dad, he'd, he'd, he'd video the, our games when I was a kid in high school, and I'd come back to my high school coach with a bunch of notes and stuff. And my high school coach would just roll his eyes, you know, like, who is this guy? You know, I thought I invented power, you know, back then. But uh, that was me, you know. And, it, and I just I loved finding those, like, those trying to find those edges. It was just that was something that appealed to me. And then, you know, being able to coach high school football, that's kind of when it clicked for me, like what, actual, what coaching actually was was impacting, you know, kids and bringing them, bringing them along and taking them from A to B and, uh, and seeing them grow. And then and that's what really got me hooked. You mentioned your wife a couple of times. There was a lot of we in your, in your press conference, which was cool. How did you guys meet? And tell me just a moment or two about her. Yeah, she's awesome. So we met in Baltimore. Uh, she was cheering for the Ravens at the time. So we, Baltimore rules, you can't date cheerleaders, it's coach or whatever, but that Uh-oh. was more on her side. Uh-oh. So we, 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 uh, yeah. What's that, Brock? Oh, uh, we got an afternoon host who did the same thing as a player <laughs> there for the Seahawks, so he's going <laughs> to love that story. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, so um, after the season ended, we, we started dating, and, and uh, the rest is history. But she's awesome. She um, She's super talented, obviously a cheerleader, and all, but like, really real talent. Like, she's a great singer. Hmm. And so she uh, she sings in a band for uh, our, our church back in back in Baltimore. So, uh, any churches out there that need a need a singer? She were uh, Brock's your guy. Yeah, Brock, you got, you got, you got a free agent eight, on the market. Yeah, eight six six nine seven nine three seven seven six. That's the text line. Go ahead and text, text in right some now. thoughts on that. Yeah, so yeah, she's super talented, and it's, and uh, she, I mean, she's my best friend. You know, so we just and we're going through this thing together, and um, I just you know, she's she's in Baltimore right now, so I can't wait to get her back up back up to Seattle. <laughs> You don't have hours. I mean, how many hours a day are we working right now? Like you're in there 17, 18 hours, right? That's why. Yeah, it's just like you know, I'm like, just stay there. Let's let's make it a smooth transition. I'm going to be working. You know, let's let's not let's not go crazy here. I guess last football question I'll ask you, and and maybe it's too early to answer this, but you've got some decisions coming up, really even within the next couple of days. Yeah. How much turnover do you expect on this roster before you coach your first game next year? I, I you know. I don't know if I can answer that. I mean, um, that's something that John and I were working through, and uh, I know there's some decisions that we got to make here, you know, pretty soon. But um, yeah, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, it's something. I'm not going in with the mentality of, hey, let's flip this whole thing over. We're not. I, I don't think that's the mentality. It's more of an open mind. What's best for the team? Obviously, John's handling it on the personnel side, but uh, we'll we'll be uh, tag team through that whole process. <laughs> Well, I sure appreciate it. As uh, we kind of suspected, Salt, so this time is going to go too fast. Yes. So hopefully yeah. we can. That was 30 uh, minutes? Yeah, 25. Pretty, pretty okay, close. 25 yeah. minutes. So it wasn't terrible, was it? No, that was awesome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll get some more opportunities to do it again. We really appreciate it. It was nice to get to meet you, you got get it. to know you a little bit. Brock, I can't believe you went 25 minutes and didn't ask him about his workout routine. Yeah. That's something we'll, well have to Well, you called him a catcher, so that, you know, that kind of was kind of so <laughs> I don't know if that start. was good. I was like, <laughs> well, I was looking at the forearms. You kind of have right. baseball forearms. Right. right. That's yeah. interesting. That's an interesting observation. I don't get it's that a, often. It's a compliment. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> How much time do you spend in a gym every day? Uh, I haven't, not as much as I should in the last couple of weeks. I know, I know some of the folks that I've seen in the morning, they've been asking where I've been last, you know, last few days, but I'll be back in there. All right. Pretty good coach. Thank you so much. It was nice to get to meet you. There's coach Mike McDonald. We got to get out of here and pave way for bump and Stacy coming up next. We'll catch you guys tomorrow morning, 6am until then Brock the hay Oh, is in the barn. See you everybody.